Hello and uh, welcome to this video. Um, this time I would like to go through how I usually work with the uh, scripts and how I use uh, Git uh, while I'm working my way through uh, say new server setups and such. Um, I like to refer to it as safe games because it means that you work through it and it's very common that you do something where you break what you were doing and you would like to be able to go back to some well-known uh, state and that's basically what we refer to as a safe game in games so the um, the basic scenario we have here is that um, we have um, some sort of uh, guide that you probably have found online this is an HTTP thing and then you will do something with it and then you will uh, create your server this is ugly so <clears throat> but before you do that you kind of need to let's add it in a different color you kind of need to have a um, test server where you configure it and you test it and you let's do it this color break break it and then we somehow uh, need to do this in a couple of iterations so that you at the end are able to make this server. So how do we make this? This, this actually looks like a really common development loop. So how do we actually achieve that? How do we go from this guide through this testing thing to a server? That's what I want to discuss with you today. The, the point about all this is that we, we really need to have some sort of test server we can set it up and then when we have set everything up we actually you know want to be able to set up for real afterwards so how to handle that that is what I would like to um, go through today um, th this, uh, th this example is for servers it could also be uh, tweaking uh, Python code or something while you break stuff and try to install the proper packages and so on but yes we continue here with uh, a new page okay so um, in my opinion the hard part about this is the uh, the setup the setup by this I mean h how do we actually uh, get the framework up and running in a way so that we are capable of doing this uh, save game thing so what I usually do is that um, I have my uh, laptop and then we do a different color here and on this laptop we have some sort of directory somehow um, and this directory is of course uh, under git uh, revision control and then I spin up a virtual machine and somehow this directory must be mapped over to this uh, directory so this is mapped somehow ie the same there are different ways of doing this um, um, this could be uh, you know uh, window shells window shells like in SIFS uh, and uh, Samba or it could be um, NFS so you have mounted this directory uh, from a uh, given server somewhere or what you will see later is uh, that I'm actually using uh, vac vacant shells for this um, the idea is that um, this guy is let's call it uh, temporary so whenever something goes wrong we just kill it and we will start another server with the uh, same directory mapped to it so that these directory these um, uh, virtual machine they are clones of each other so that I can boot this machine I do my stuff I kill it again this is uh, actually also the exact same thing you would do with something like Docker but you must have a setup where you are capable of um, you need some uh, base image 
and then you must be able to uh, clone it and you must be able to delete and you must be able to map drives um, I usually use um, uh, Vagrant for this um, that uses uh, my hypervisor, my chosen hypervisor is KVM and Libya. but you will be able to make um, you, you could do this manually so let's do manually where you go into your hypervisor's graphical interface and say I have a base image that I've installed a long time ago I clone it before I do my stuff and then I delete it again and then with some features for mapping drives that works also so the um, Yes, the, let, let me show you how I actually um, do the vagrant part. I have it over here. Um, I have uh, just spun up a vagrant machine. This is a uh, default um, Debian Buster 64-bit version. This is uh, basically just on vagrant in it. And that, that um, spins it up so I can... Um, so I have done vagrant up. I can do vagrant um, destroy. I'm sure I want to destroy it because I actually didn't do anything yet and then so that would be the uh, deletion part and then I can spin it up again you can also specify how to provision machines using Vagrant but that's not the goal of today uh, in order to run the scripts you of course need to have a way of uh, how to draw this let's find a good color for that um, you somehow need to, um, I use HHH for all these things, but in order to get some sort of uh, command prompt over here. Um, for Windows this would be um, RDP or it would be WinRM, whatever you feel like. And we also had that one here. So that you're able to remote control this machine, you're able to play with data that is um, external to this machine so while you update and run this you will be able to update your um, uh, configurations so in the example I want to do today I want to um, set up a um, an Nginx server and um, I have done this before so I actually know this is something like app get install app install Nginx and then something with the uh, sites available to enable avail available and something with a config file in that directory I, I, I know this so but imagine you found this on some guide somewhere and we will probably so so this would be for an um, install script and then we will probably also make a, a test.sh where we basically just do curl. Okay, so let's um, let's go through this and see how we actually make this happen. So over here, we will have I need to get my keyboard. Sorry, that was a technical glitch. Um, so, when I um, go into the uh, uh, machine here with Vagrant, we are doing a Vagrant SSH. This locks into the uh, Vagrant box, and uh, this is just a default Vagrant box. Uh, if I do the uh, disk free, I can see we can see that we actually have the um, um, slash Vagrant here, where we map it to the uh, home directory. So let's go there. So uh, we need to um, install um, Nginx. So let's uh, we have a Nano. I always use Nano for almost anything around here. Um, and then uh, this is a script. So um, we need to make it executable in a while. So this is a bash script. So we will do an apt um, install Nginx. No, 
Ah, that wasn't what I wanted. Let's do it again. It was uh, bin in the bash, and then an app get installed in Ginix. Cool. In Ginix. Okay, and uh, we need to run this as sudo. Uh, actually, we could make it uh, chmod uh, plus x so that it becomes executable. Okay, um, let's run it. Oh dear, blah blah, permission denied. Are you root? So we probably need to run this root also. Yes, and what you see here is that it will say, oh yeah, we need to install a lot of extra packages. And this is actually not what I want because I want it to do it automatically. So um, when you add the dash Y flag to this, it will automatically say yes to whatever questions there was. So now it's just downloading and having a merry time. So now I've basically made a script that is able to install Nginx. So next time I'm wondering how to install Nginx, I can just look in the script. This is kind of a way of uh, putting um, documentation into uh, what you're doing. And just for um, note taking, I'm always adding a readme. Um, so um, this is um, Nginx installation. Um, and this is um, here you will put um, any guy, link, link, put put link to any guide you used. I'm a strong proponent of uh, giving credit where it's needed. So when people have written a really nice blog post, we really should link to it for multiple reasons. One of them is to be able to refine whoever did it because they're probably competent at what they're doing. So you might want to look at it again. And for other people, um, when you make this script, perhaps it will break for uh, the next version or something. So they will have some way more words on how to do it. Um, this is a basic engine X installation script. Done. Okay. So now uh, we actually have a little thing going and please notice that uh, if I run it twice, no change. This is actually Eden potent the way it's made right here. It won't always be that way, but often when you uh, build these scripts, you will make it easy for yourself, which often includes just copying entire files instead of adding stuff to files. Um, and then of course we need to uh, um, make it a git repository. Oh dear, git is not installed. How to handle that? What I usually do is I'm um, um, where am I right now? Uh, I have an uh, script examples, right? I've put it in the very wrong place. Interesting. So it's always interesting when you um, make it wrong. Um, I need to exit this one. And I've put it very much in the wrong place. So I will do a, a vagrant destroy to kill what I have made. Yes. I will move the uh, vagrant file to the directory I made for this um, example. I will move the um, installation script to the uh, Brower directory. And I'll of course go into the directory. Okay, so. Now we have all the proper files and let's uh, spin up uh, Vagrant again. So this should work now. Okay, fine. Uh, as I was saying, we need to use git for this. So I will uh, initialize git and I will um, do a, um, I usually use uh, git GUI for this because I actually prefer the graphical user interface for these things. And you see it has an entire list of things. So I will add Vagrant to the um, ignore file just to make sure we don't have noise. Uh -huh. Yes, and now we have three files. 
first commit. And these files include uh, some ignore files, some vagrant file. Oh yeah, I forgot to copy the um, um, the init file, the readme file. Okay, first commit. We have uh, some text. We have some uh, no change in these things. Cool. So, and now we have also booted the uh, machine again. Perhaps I should make it the same size here. Yeah. Okay. And then I do a vagrant SSH. Um, instead of doing vagrant SSH, if this were a virtual machine running somewhere else, you could just SSH to that machine. But this is super convenient for this specific uh, use case. Okay. And just a comment here. If I go into the vagrant thing, you'll see that I have mapped the slash vagrant inside the box with the uh, script examples um, that is on my laptop. So down here is my laptop, up here is the um, uh, Vagrant box. Okay, so um, we of course are not uh, happy with this, um, or actually is it working? Um, I can find the um, IP address, oh yeah, Let, let's just find the IP address like this. So we have an IP address called um, this. So if I do a um, curl on that, connection refused, oh dear, so it's actually not running. And if you go here, you'll see that uh, we have nothing running on port 80. Fine, so what's wrong? Well, what's wrong is that we actually didn't start um, um, nginx yet so we need to uh, do a um, sudo service nginx start this was obviously not what I expected okay Super nice example. Um, oh yeah, ha! Huh, I forgot. We have not installed. We just killed the virtual machine, and now we need to uh, rerun the uh, installation script. And if you run the installation script too many times, it doesn't change anything because it's um, item potent. Okay. So, and the. the Imagine doing something more complex than just app installing something. Now it just remembers how to do this. So let's see if um, it's better now when it's done installing. Um, getting back over here to the uh, we app install nginx, we need to look at the sites available and we need to look in the config file. Okay. And we have um, um, installed. Are we able to see it now? Yes, now we actually have something run in port 80, and if we do the curl command again, we will see that, welcome to nginx, if you see this page, it's successfully installed. So, we have installed nginx, and we're happy. So, I would like to um, change the uh, default um, index page, so in order to do that, I will um, go... Now let's just uh, let's just tweak uh, the uh, welcome thing. So in order to um, figure out where this is, we can go to the um, etc engine engine x sites enabled, and we all only have the default one, and we can see this is the default configuration. And what I'm interested in is this guy. So this is where we have the um, HTML files that is used. And um, if we copy that one, uh, and we copy it to, um, and just call it index.html, then we can edit it, and say, um, uh, Delete some of this and say uh, yes. This is our 
uh, index page. Welcome to script example. Okay, um, index with an I. So now, next to the um, installer, we have a file called index.html. And we want to copy that to the um, um, to the HTML directory. Um, first, I would actually like to check what permissions that we are doing in that directory. And it's root root. Okay, it's fine. So in the um, installer script, I will now copy the file called index.html to the location of the um, sorry HTML to the location of the um, HTML files and then we run it again and since it's Linux doesn't say it when it succeeds but we should see now that welcome to script example this is our index page okay so we uh, we see what we changed in Git. We added the uh, index.html and copied it. And then just added index.html. And we commit. And now we think everything is working. The, let's assume that we're done with the project now. So what we want to do is that we want to exit this guy up here. And um, then we kill the virtual machine because we think that all the changes we have made, we have saved that in the install file and that we actually know um, about what we are doing so that um, all the changes have been caught by the installation script so that it will be trivial for us to recreate it. If you noticed, I have killed this machine and set it up I don't know, five times during this video already. And it's because I have a super sane development environment for specific these things. So the faster you can make your development loops, as in change something, check it, and uh, fix it if there's a problem, and commit it when you're done, you will have um, a much uh, better development process. Um, yes? And it's installing the NFS client, and that's how it works. Hmm, this is weird. Actually, this is one of the rare cases where I actually installed sudo on my machine. In order to allow Vagrant to handle all this NFS stuff, I have made a passwordless sudo for this specific purpose for that specific user. It's super convenient. Okay. So now we have uh, spun up the machine and if we go down here again we expect this to fail because that uh, we don't have installed nginx provided you knows the machine. No route to host. We have a we have a new IP address. So let's try the new IP address instead. Click to connect, connection refused. We have nothing running on that port. Okay, so we go to the um, directory. We will do the uh, sudo install. And then we'll again install uh, Nginx. Um, right now I'm very happy that I actually have an internet connection that's fairly fast. Um, so we install Nginx again. And it will copy the file again. And uh, now we should see that uh, we're actually looking at our own scripts example. Okay. So, um, this was a, a small video about how I use scripts and Git to do what I like to call save games. Imagine that at one of the steps, if it had been more complex, I kind of accidentally deleted uh, all the uh, configuration files or I made changes in configuration file that I actually don't know what I did and were unable to 
um, handle. Then I just kill the machine and run the installation script again. Um, and now, next time I want to install an Nginx server, I can actually pull this um, script out of the hat again. Um, this is how I do it for very simple examples so that I have super readable scripts for my students. Um, if that had been more in a let's call professional setting, more um, complicated example, I would have used Ansible for these things. Just exactly the same method. So instead of editing a um, shell script, I would be editing an uh, Ansible playbook. Gives the same same result except that you have more power with Ansible. Well, actually, that's wrong. You have way more convenience with Ansible. You can do everything with Bash, obviously, but it's more convenient with Ansible if it becomes more complex. Yes. Thank you for um, watching the video, and we'll see each other next time.